And this methylation blocks the formation of compounds in certain cells that are involved in a, a skin disease. And uh, we, we, they saw a, a excellent activity in uh, uh, that particular uh, disease. So this is one example where cannabidiol methylates, uh, changes the effect of DNA. This is an epigenetic change. Now, is it possible, just possible, and I'm speculating here, is it possible that many of the effects of cannabidiol and possibly of anandamide, there are, of, people are thinking that anandamide may be doing the same, is it possible that some of the effects of cannabidiol are due to methylation of specific DNAs? If this is the case, then we should go and look deeply into these effects, because here we have something which acts on the basis of the disease and not just on the symptoms. Uh, it is quite possible that some of the effects are indeed due to methylation, but more possibly that uh, some others are not. Then the question is, does CBD mimic an endogenous compound? Is the endogenous compound anandamide, or maybe it's something else, maybe it's a steroid? We don't know. But here we have something that will certainly develop within the next uh, few years. Now, let me go on to uh, the actions to the CB2 receptor. Uh, as you heard before, and uh, uh, I mentioned at the beginning, there are two receptors, the CB1, Activation of CB1 causes the psychoactivity. Activation of CB2 does not cause psychoactivity. The activation of CB2 does all kinds of other things, most of them of a protective nature. And, uh, uh, for example, uh, there is a long list. We published, a, a, we had a publication uh, showing that many, in many diseases, there is an enhancement of the CB2 receptor in particular cells that are involved in a particular disease. Uh, there are also uh, publications showing that uh, endogenous cannabinoids, are, the levels of these endogenous cannabinoids are enhanced and they may be acting on the CB2. We have seen that, many groups have seen that in uh, heart conditions, many groups have seen that in atherosclerosis, uh, possibly in uh, stroke, in uh, uh, spinal cord injury, in heart failure, in septic shock. Uh, there, are a lot, there is a lot of work on liver diseases, and people have seen that in these liver diseases there is a CB2 enhancement, either uh, of the receptor itself or of the endocannabinoids in these particular cells. And uh, the question is, why do we see these enhancements? Is it possible that uh, the body reacts to these diseases by enhancement of uh, the CB2 receptor, enhancement of the anandamide and 2-AG acting on these receptors, and in this way uh, uh, making this system, the CB2 system, a protective system, a major protective system in the body. And we have seen that in many other cases. We have seen that, uh, we, by we I mean uh, many, many groups throughout the world have seen uh, things of this sort happening with inflammatory diseases, inflammatory bowel disease, colitis. Uh, this has been seen in pancreatitis, in uh, nephropathy, and so on. Uh, this has been seen in pain. Uh, I just wonder whether one can measure perhaps pain by looking at the levels of the endogenous compound. There is no way to measure pain today. Measuring pain is uh, by asking the patient, are you in pain? And he says yes. Uh, consider the pain from 0 to 10, and he will say 5 or 6. This is not measurement. Uh, maybe 
one can measure pain or in the future by determining the levels of uh, the CB2 receptor, determining the levels of endogenous cannabinoids. Uh, so here we have a long list of uh, compounds which uh, uh, may be acting. Now, we have synthesized some compounds which uh, are more active and more specific for the CB2 receptor. And these compounds are being tested for a variety of diseases and um, uh, possibly some of them at least will enter uh, uh, our medical book books as they are specific for the CB2 receptor. Uh, this will, will have to wait in the next few years to happen. And let me go now to something very close, and this is bone remodeling. Now, you will ask, what, what, how come you're speaking with an endomite and endocannabinoid system, and here you're speaking of bones? It has nothing to do, no? It has something to do. Let me go back a bit. Uh, it has been known for many years that uh, uh, the population around the Mediterranean has less, um, uh, have less hip fractures and uh, uh, less osteoporosis than people in Northern Europe. Uh, it was thought for many years, correctly, that it has to do with the use of olive oil. And the major component of olive oil is oleic acid. So in a research project, which had nothing to do at the beginning at least with cannabinoids, we looked at oleic acid in, as an osteo, anti-osteoporotic agent, and we saw no, no activity. Then we thought maybe, just maybe, it's a metabolite, a derivative a derivative of uh, uh, oleic acid, a metabolite of the oleic acid which acts, and we looked at some of the compounds formed by oleic acid in the body. And uh, let, let me show you a little bit of uh, uh, chemistry. Uh, on the up left-hand side, you can see an andamite. Then uh, another compound which has been look, uh, has been discovered uh, is uh, 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 some of these uh, arachidonoidin I already mentioned, and oleyl etanolamide, this compound that has been found by others. So we thought maybe, just maybe, if we take all these compounds and look at the similarity, maybe uh, the compound which works on the uh, uh, in the body, in the bones, is uh, something that has to do with oleic acid and something that has to do with serine. We've seen that serine is uh, involved with arachidonic acid. So uh, we prepared uh, oleic serine and looked for it in the bones. And indeed, we found that oleic serine is found in bones and it is extremely potent in acting against osteoporosis. Uh, so here we have a compound which by chance, we were working something else, but which by chance actually turned out to be closely, closely related to the endocannabinoid system. Endocannabinoid system is fatty acid bound to amino acid. Here we have a fatty acid or lake acid bound to an amino acid, which is serine. So here we have oleyl serine, which is a potent anti-osteoporotic agent in animals. Now, how does one look in that? One can get mice and uh, cause by taking out the reproductive system, uh, cause osteoporosis. This is what happens in women after the age of 50, 55. They get osteoporosis because the reproductive system is not uh, uh, working as it used to work to, to, to do that before. And um, uh, these animals developed uh, osteoporosis. Then we looked at what this oleyl serine does. Yes, it acts on the cells that produce, 
the materials needed for the bones and acts, blocks uh, the activities that cause uh, destruction of the bone. And uh, as you can see in the next slide, uh, if we if we take um, uh, animals and uh, they have uh, they get osteoporosis, then uh, we see that uh, the red uh, here uh, the osteoporosis is pretty strong. Now most of the drugs that are used today they block the destruction, and uh, but they do not have the material the bones go uh, form up again. Uh, oleal serine, which is a natural product formed by the bones, they not only block the destruction of the bone, but actually help in building the bone again. And here we have a compound made by our body, made by the bones, which is closely related to the endocannabinoid system, but acts in a completely different way acts on bones. Chances are that we have many other uh, compounds which uh, do the same in different uh, parts of the body. And uh, I expect that within the next few years, we shall see many of these. Now, uh, allow me to summarize what I've been trying to say. Uh, endocannabinoids are involved in a large number of physiological processes. Uh, and THC mimics the endocannabinoid system. This is one. The CBD, uh, which uh, is obviously closely related to the cannabinoid, to THC, does not work on directly to the endocannabinoid system, but has such a huge number of effects that chances are that it is somehow involved in the endocannabinoid system, and some of the effects of the CBD can be blocked by endocannabinoid antagonists. Here we have a lot of question marks, and I hope that these will be solved within the next few years. Then we have the fatty acid amino acid, and we have about 200 of those, a fatty acid amino acid or fatty acid amino acid derivatives which are present in the brain, possibly in other parts of our body, which are very much involved in uh, uh, many activities of the body, and uh, we know very, very little about them, and we should probably have to investigate those in great detail over the next decade. And the last thing I mentioned uh, is the CB2-specific agonist. As the CB2 system is a system that has a, a to do with prevention of the damage of many diseases. Uh, chances are that the CB2, specific CB2 compounds can become major new drugs. And um, uh, I would like to thank many of my collaborators. These are, this is a list of some of my collaborators in Israel. And um, I collaborate with a huge number of uh, colleagues abroad. And um, uh, this is a list of some of my collaborators, and uh, starting from Aberdeen and into born in Germany and uh, in the Czech state, etc., etc. And they visit me and I visit them, uh, with one exception. My good uh, uh, friend and collaborator, Leonid Maslow, is in Siberia. And he had a meeting, a cannabinoid meeting, and he invited me. And then I asked, and when is the meeting taking place? And he said, in February. And I asked, and what is uh, the temperature in Siberia in February? And he said, well, not too bad, minus 25 centigrade. Well, I said, no, no, thank you. Coming from a semi-tropical country, uh, going to minus 25, it's a little bit too much. So I said, no, thank you. And I thank the audience.